what do you think it's going to take to make America healthy? Yeah. And this is not Maha propaganda. Yeah. This is just, can Maha do it? What do they need to do better? What do they, what can, what can you do? What can yeah. we all do? It's a great question. And it was funny to me, I was thinking as you were talking about how, you know, when Michelle Obama started her Let's Move campaign, it was a blue issue. A lot of the people who were like pushing this agenda was Shelley Pingree, who's a Democrat from Maine, or uh, McGovern, Jim McGovern, who's from Massachusetts, or Cory Booker, who introduced all these bills about food safety in the last Congress. And all of a sudden, it's boom, like it flipped and became a Republican issue, which is staggering to me. And we now see bills in you know, a few dozen states or more, actually. Now, every day I hear about new bills that are helping push forward an agenda to fix our food system. And before you dive in, I, will, I just want to seed this answer with one thing. Forgive me, audience. They don't like it when I interrupt. But the goal of the left, if I may, seems to be to make anyone associated with health and Maha on the right a jock, not a scientist. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm seeing. They're trying to take away their science credential. Yeah. And make them a jock. Now, Bobby Kennedy is not a formally trained scientist, but um, the scientists that are going into NIH directorships, who I can't share who they are besides Jay, it's been announced, the yeah. other ones, but you know who they are. Yeah. They, these are serious scientists. Yeah. These aren't jocks. No. These are people that may well, or may not lift weights. These right. are people. <laughs> but but there seems to be this effort to say we're going to we're going to strip Maha of its power by making it a bro science biohacking yeah. jock thing. Real science is about reductionist stuff. And I just say, listen, it's all it's all valuable. Yeah. And so I'm I'm fundamentally frustrated and it hasn't even begun. No, so it is. educate yeah. us. I mean listen, you know, uh, my friend Rick Warren said I'm not left wing or right wing. I'm for the whole bird, otherwise you'll fly around in circles. <laughs> I and, like that. And who said and that? Rick Warren. You know, we Who's did a, Rick Warren? Rick Warren is the head of Saddleback Church, which is an evangelical church in Southern California. I, we did a whole health program with this church where we got a, uh, 15,000 people to lose a quarter million pounds in a year by doing health together in groups. And it was, ama that. It was amazing, actually. Well, I love that quote. It was a great quote. And, and you know, health isn't red or blue or purple. It's like a human issue. And it's, to, make, to make it partisan, it doesn't make any sense to me. And yet, we live in a partisan world. And anything the Democrats do, the Republicans are going to hate. Anything the Republicans are going to do, the Democrats are going to hate. It's like, hey, guys, can't we just talk to each other and have civil discourse and agree on the things we can agree on and disagree on the things we're going to disagree on? And I, and I know that I know behind the scenes, there's collaboration bipartisan on these issues. There's bipartisan caucus that. Well, on the is, psychedelic issue, I was at a meeting where, you know, Governor Rick Perry, former Governor. Rick Perry, Texas, like who describes himself as a knuckle-dragging Republican. Yeah. Those are Rick's words, by the way. Rick's a very nice guy. And there were several members of the the Dems there. And you got Rick Doblin, who was like a you know counterculture uh, conscientious objector during the Vietnam War. And they're all up there being proponents for psychedelics for yeah. the treatment of yeah. PTSD yeah. and veterans. So yeah. they've joined hands. Yeah, I think that's one area that's very exciting. Yeah. It's not happening in nutrition. No. It's not happening on this thing of get exercise. Those have become red labels. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, Americans are suffering. You know, Americans are really suffering. You know, 93% of us have some metabolic dysfunction. Psychiatric illnesses on the rise in both kids and adults. Autoimmune diseases are skyrocketing. Obviously, obesity is a huge problem. Diabetes is a huge problem. You know, heart disease, deaths are going down, but the incidence is going up, meaning you're there's more people getting it, but because we have better treatments, they don't die from it. Same thing with cancer. So we're not winning on the health front in the war on, on chronic disease. We're losing disastrously. And so we have to come together as a country to solve this. And it's unfortunate and polarized. I think, I think the good part about um, COVID was that people became aware that this edifice of science and medicine had cracks in it and that they needed to be more empowered around their own health and to start questioning things. And I think... That's part of the genesis of this bigger, wider movement around Make America Healthy Again and why Bobby Kennedy was able to catalyze a huge base. He was Democratic candidate at first, then he was independent, now he's in the Republican administration. It doesn't mean he shares all the ideology that they have, but he cares about this issue. And so I think, I think what's happening in, behind the scenes is that there's a lot of bipartisan interest in how do we begin to address this. Look, the health care bill is $5 trillion. Of that, the government, federal government, pays 40%. It's one in three federal tax dollars. So one in three dollars that you pay for your taxes goes to health care. Of that, 80% is mostly for chronic disease that's either preventable or reversible through 
a intensive lifestyle therapy and, and you know, some things around the margins. If insurance is private, how does that work? Like, how is it that my money is going well, to so take care of somebody who has for example, um, heart disease? For example, like, like if you get on to Medicare Advantage, that's, that's a government program, but it's administered by Humana or by Cigna or by these insurance companies kind of deploy federal resources to, to deliver health care. But if you actually look at the end-to-end, whether it's Medicare, Medicaid, Indian Health Service, federal employees, children's health program, you just add up all the things that the government pays for, mm-hmm. it's, it's almost $2 trillion a year for, for health care. And most people don't realize that. So the government has enormous levers. And when I was sitting in my office treating my patients who are you know, just endless stream of people with chronic illnesses coming, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune disease, this, that, and the other thing, I'm like, why is this patient sick? Well, it's mostly because of the food they're eating. And if that's the problem, then what's the cause of the food they're eating? Well, it's our food policies. And what's the cause of our food policies? It's the food industry that has pressured our government to, into creating a food system that's harming us. And we have very different policies than they do in Europe. For example, they don't allow uh, many GMO foods or glyphosate. They don't. They have, there's ten, high fructose corn syrup. They have it there, but it's limited. I mean, more limited. The toxins. There's ten thousand additives to food in America. There's four hundred that are allowed in Europe. 